All right, it's a, it's a big day here today for After the Snow. We have a, a very, very special guest. I'm your, I'm your co-host, Dave Mays, and of course, um, you know, the legendary Freeway Rick Ross here for After the Snow, back again. A very, very special guest with us, uh, Miss Chris, Miss Christine Horn, who most of our, our fans and fans of Snowfall know as Black Diamond from uh, Snowfall. Yes. You know, amazing. Amazing character that's had a lot of people talking about you. <laughs> beautiful. Too. Hopefully. And beautiful too. Thank you. Thank you. I know like viewers like, where's her hair? It's in it's in the bag. Uh-huh. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm I'm honored to be here and, and get to talk about this. This is really fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been waiting to get you in here, you know. Uh sorry about me holding you up all day today. Uh it's been a hectic day for me today, so I'll it's all guys. stuff happens. Yeah, we just go. We life some what they say, life be life in sometimes. Sometimes life be life in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they well, got me in on this show, and uh, you know we've been rolling for a couple of weeks now, and uh, you our first guest. Yeah, that's why I say I feel honored. I'm excited. Let's dive in. What are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about you. <laughs> Black Diamond, <laughs> yes. gangster girl, yes. the gangster girl. I love it. I love it. I'm having the time of my life. We have so much fun shooting Snowfall, and uh, you know, fun fact: I auditioned for Snowfall every season. I was already I was a fan from episode one, and never just didn't book it. Didn't book it. Got a callback. Got a callback. Even in season four, when I booked Black Diamond, I read for several roles before that. And then another fun fact, myself and Taylor Polidor, who plays Dallas, we both originally auditioned for opposite roles. And then when it got down to the wire, they're like, you know what, let's swap you, do another audition. And and here we are. So it's, it's this was the this was the best role that I got to read for. So I'm happy. Everything works out in divine. Well, the time. show needed you. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right role, right time. And I think I think Black Diamond and, and Dallas, I think we just bring a a fun, even though like, yeah, we're, you know, killing people and, you know, and doing things like we bring a fun feminine energy to the show, I think, especially um, things are so heavy so much of the time. You know, I think that's been the most fun. Yeah, me and Dave talked about that a couple of weeks ago about how 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 the show is it, it it seems like everybody is always angry, you know. It's 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 it's, <laughs> it's never any fun and, and and excitement. I'm like, man, where's the fun at? Let's have some fun. Let's go to the beach and have a yeah. party or something, you know. But um, to see a female playing your role because there were females in the game that that carried it like men, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, uh, I had a friend, um, ooh, her name just slipped my mind, too. Uh, uh, she was from the Low Bottoms. And, uh, mm-hmm. and she would get in the street, take her shoes off and fight with a man. Like, come on, man. We're going to do this. <laughs> Stacy, that's her name. Stacy was. Stacey. Come on, Stacy. Yes. Stacy would take her shoes off, man. And she'd be like, come on. We, you got a problem with me? We're going to handle it like men. So uh, <laughs> I had women to carry, you know, to carry their own weight, you know, and don't take no stuff off no men. So uh listen, uh, don't be surprised in season six you see my shoes come off. You gonna know where it came <laughs> from. Shout out to Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like y'all done took y'all shoes off already because your boy <laughs> done went crazy. And uh Ooh. hey, the no holes bars. You don't care who you are, you know, auntie, uncle. Nope. Listen, he said he told on on Louis, I would kill you ten times over to get my right. money. Right. I kept watching that finale. You like you read the script, but and then but when you see it all come together, I said, "Say what now?" So listen, I'm just did, happy did, we're still alive. The season five ended. We are still alive. Yeah, coming, yeah. Come, looking good, looking good. Right. You guys That's close, all we can out, say. close out strong. Did Did you have anyone that like work with you on your character to give you kind of those kind of stories, like Rick just mentioned, or any reference points for? what women were like at, at at that time? Well, for me, I just, I did my own like research of just the time. I went back and watched some older movies, but also our, one of the writers, Janine Daniels, who brought these characters to the show, told us just about some of these women and, and how they lived like almost these double lives. Like we imagined them being like 
they used to be nurses or had their nursing, you know, work at a, you know, at a doctor's office that wasn't making enough money. And I just started to really just do my own character work, character building work. Like, what would it be like to be in this time? You have kids, you got responsibility, you need this paper, stuff is popping off. And so I just kind of stepped into it just with a kind of a mix of just things that I've seen growing up, growing up in New York, seeing what happens in, in L.A., and just put that together to create Black Diamond. I mean, even during my audition process, she was just very clear to me. You know, just I just felt her. And I also felt just tapped into that part of me that's like <laughs> will pop off, but that that can also be maternal. But this is just business. And uh, and clearly it worked, you know? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Rick, did, did you know any actual female kind of hit women um, or assassin type who, who were really heavy into the, you know, the murder game, let's say? Well, well you know, in L.A., we really didn't have necessarily what, what you call assassins, you know, where people would just go out and 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 get paid to kill anybody. It wasn't really like that. But, you know, we had women that would kill you if you lost <laughs> them or, or, or you got in and, you know, if you got in a mix the wrong way. You know, they 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 would take care of their business. Um, I know to rob, they would rob. You know, if their gang was robbing, they would be they would be robbers. Uh, but I, I don't think in L.A. The, 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 the straight assassin thing was really like something that was really going on during our time. Uh, you know, you know, with the gangs, even though they got the gangs and stuff, there's not really shot callers and, and, and people who really like you know, dominate the, the situation. It's like everybody is kind of like a free fall. Like, I'm my own boss. You know, I do what I want to do. You know, I might roll with you, but then I might not roll with you. That that kind of situation was more like what, what the L.A. scene is like. You know, it's not really a nobody that's really focused on that. That's like, oh, you, you want somebody assassinated? You call Black Diamond. No, we didn't. We didn't right. have that in L.A. per se. You know, but you might have somebody in your crew that, you know, you know, oh, they take care of their business if, if necessary. Yeah. And I, I think that's kind of how y'all did it in, 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 in this last scenes with with uh, with uh, with Franklin after, you know, after you guys have made your truth. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I was scared for you, now. I was scared for you guys going to that one, man. <laughs> Listen, it's like money talks. Like, where's the loyalty? The loyalty is to this dollar and to into taking care of ours, you know? So it's like, we don't feel no kind of way about it. Yeah. What time you need to be there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all work y'all way all the way up into uh, uh, his right-hand people. Mm -hmm. right that, that, that really excited me this season. Even with the first episode, we read the script. We were like, how much time has passed? Like, we this cool now? This is what we doing? <laughs> and so it's like, okay, 15 months. Okay, 15 months passed. And yeah, and it's like, we're legit always there. Like, his muscle outside of Peaches. And we saw how that went down this season. Uh, and you know, season, we are, we are going to crack it next season. So that means y'all going to be, uh, when, he, when he takes the power back, Cause I know he got to get the power back from Louis. Louis can't keep the power, but Louis, nah. hey, Louis don't play either though now. Mm -mm, at all, and we see, we got to see a lot of that this season. Uh, before we came on, started recording today, I was just talking about that growth of the, of the characters from episode one, season one. I know you all are about to go back and review each one, but I thought that's been really interesting to watch her progression in this life. Well, she was you know? a gangster though from the beginning. You know, like. She was. One of the first scenes that I saw was Wildcat. <laughs> yeah, when the boy was on the front porch and then uh, uh we just sick Louis on us. Get her, Louis. Yep. You know, and, and Louis take her earrings. When Louis started taking her earrings out before he even told her, he was like getting ready, like I'm finna She was watching the TV. She was watching her stories. It was like yeah. she already knew. I, I fell in love with her character then. Louis, Louis is a gangster. Yeah. So so most everyone, you know, saw the finale episode. That was just last week. So the season just ended. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was a, a grand finale, as as we called it. Lots of uh, action. Sure you, guys, you guys are right in the in in the mix of it all. Um, the very very end, after you guys go and uh, kind of you know kill up a couple of Leon uh, people <laughs> and um, get the money with Franklin and everything. But the very end, you're shown kind of walking with uh, Franklin and uh, it looked like one of uh, Kane's guys. Yes. Uh, if I'm remembering right. 
So um, it looks like, you know, you guys have joined forces with with Kane uh, or Franklin has recruited him. We know he went to the hospital and told him, you know, that it was a little bug in his ear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what more can you can you tell us? Was there is there any more about where we you think things will go next season? Will you definitely be back next season? I'm assuming you are. Have they made that official? You know, we don't know. We don't know yet. That's that's the that's what's the honest truth. We, de you know, I'm sure at this moment, our showrunner Dave Andron is brainstorming some amazing things for next season. Um, but what I do know for sure is we'll see more. We'll we got to see more Kane. Period. I mean, the, the way everything ended and that what's that whole backstory. You know, even when Kane gets mentioned, when we're out trying to figure out if it's Peaches or who's responsible, and they're like, oh, every, oh, Kane. Oh, remember Kane? Like, and we're like, well, who the hell is Kane? Like, what what's that story there? So I anticipate seeing a whole lot more of that story and how how we even got to this place, why we got to the point where he's, you know, tried to kill him and did all that stuff a few, a few episodes ago. So right. that's what I'm excited to see. And, and I think right now. Can you trust somebody you tried to kill? You don't trust nobody. Who do you trust? Nobody. None of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think every everybody's always watching their back. I, I was thinking that 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 uh, really like you guys should be taking Louis and 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 Unk spot. You know, because he don't have anybody else right now. You know, so mm -hmm. so I, I feel like the writers got to write you guys in as as the right hand people right now. I mean, that's almost mandatory. Yeah. Who else? Is I mean, that's that's what I that's what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> I be check I check the comments. I, I read you know Twitter and and Facebook, and it's so it's so awesome to to read the fans' comments. I mean, they they don't hold their tongue at all. They're gonna say how they feel and what should happen. But um, yeah, I think we'll I I feel we'll definitely be there because how could we not? We're really all he has to count on at this moment. Because I'm like, gosh, when Unc finds out how he's been de dealing with Louie, you know, they ain't going to be worried about Black Diamond in Dallas. The issue's with Franklin. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be, but he need, And then he really needs you guys because you guys are the only real warriors that's been, you know, there with him uh, uh, through this whole ordeal that he's been going through. So I feel like yeah, he absolutely. has to turn to you in, in some form or some fashion. And, and then after, after that, if he wins, then he has to take you guys with him because you guys helped him. I mean, you know, if he's the point guard, you definitely was his forward. Yeah. One, 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 one would hope, you know, yeah. hope <laughs> now, hope. every time a script comes out, I mean, truly it's like everybody gets the script and it's like, checking real quick. Are we still alive? Like what happened? <laughs> Are they going to kill me? How am I <laughs> is this the episode where it just is done? Okay. Not, so, not too many people died, you know, main characters, you know, this season. Of course, we lost Avi that a lot of people, Avi. a lot of people were upset to see him go. But all, I, I thought more of the main one or more of the main characters were going to were going to get uh, killed this season. And they saving did. it. They yeah, saving it. I see. I <laughs> well, see. Season six can go out with a bang. Like, I just I can't only imagine. Yeah. Truly. T I'm, I'm, t t tell us. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. No, I was gonna say, to tell us a little more about the behind the scenes of working on the show. You know, where do you guys film? When did you guys rap? And any stories uh, you could share of you know interesting things that happened in, in, in working on this past season? Yeah, you know, we film a lot. Um, our stages are downtown L LA, but we film a lot in depending on what is happening out in San Bernardino. Um, that's another, you know, we think about that drive. It's just so far. But that's like where a lot of the the projects are. Um, gosh, what's some fun stuff? <laughs> I think the most fun really is just when we're when it's an ensemble uh, ensemble piece, a scene where there's a lot of us in it. Especially, you know, especially days where D Ray's around. Like there's just a lot of laughter, a lot of joking. But people, you know, you're dealing with consummate professionals also, so people turn it on and turn it right back off. So those are the most fun days because they're just we just get a kick out, out of each other. People tease each other and then go go crush it in their close up. Um, I think that's a lot of fun. Um, we wrapped. We started filming around October and we wrapped. Gosh, it might have been March, early March, like not too far before we actually aired. 
Um, and you know, what's awesome is each director, we block shoot. So each director does two episodes each, which is really nice because you get a chance to feel the different styles and, and, and cinematography in different direction. That's always very nice. So it gets to bring something different, like the episode that you meet my kid, when we show up to, to drop our kids off, you know, our director, Damien was very adamant about not wanting to see black diamond in Dallas as like, regular women who they're, this is their job, but th they are raising kids and they're not always with, you know, big lashes and tons of makeup on. Like they're just like every other mom dropping their kid off at school. So those different perspectives are really nice when you get a fresh pair of eyes that comes to the set. And you know, when, when I saw, cause I think one of my first episodes that I saw was when you guys met at the school. So I didn't know, no history or nothing. I just came right in on that. Oh. And, and here you are meeting at the school. And I was like, what's going on? Then I heard Aunt Louie, no, one of you guys told Aunt Louie, uh, uh, I'm glad you didn't die or something like that. Dear. Right. That was, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and a fun, another, a fun story for you. I'll give a little story for the, for the fans. That day was hilarious because we had these two kids. And the little girl was very shy. And Eamon, he loves to ad lib. <laughs> and so there was a, Aunt Louie supposed to give a, a lollipop to the kids so that she could talk to us. But Eamon decided he was, was he deep in character? He snatches the lollipop away from the little girl. The little girl gets, um, <laughs> she gets scared. And it was just this whole thing. She didn't want to act anymore. So we had to bribe her with oh, Skittles. No. So she would. Oh, no. <laughs> Hey, so hey, the running hey. joke is our like our 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 cast candy is kind of like Skittles because that's how we had to get the kids to perform. It was just hilarious. I was like, oh, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that Amen plays Uncle Jerome. In case anyone yeah. doesn't know, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Um, what about the writers? Who are some of the writers on the show? And what is you, do you get to deal with them directly much or? No, actually, I mean. Honestly, we don't. I mean, we have so many great writers, um, but we don't, you know, we don't always see them. You know, we we get a draft, you know, and there's a name. So they're usually at the table read. Um, but there's, you know, the, you have the, the our showrunner, Dave Andron, does a lot of the writing, but there's so many guest writers also. Um, but I feel like they all have the tone. You know, the tone is all there. It's, I think it still honors um, the show in general and where it's headed, um, which keeps it interesting. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, how much you are familiar with Rick's story um, and, you know, how much did you know about that going into being a part of Snowfall? Well, I didn't know. A lot. I've heard the name. It's one of those things you hear the name, you, you hear about the lawsuit, <laughs> you know, things like that. But, you know, I, I mean, serious, you know, so I had to just do a lot of research, too, just about just that time and what that might have might have felt like. Honestly, getting ready for this interview, I, I dove a bit deeper just because I just like to always be prepared. Um, but I think it's I love the fact that you're even here to share your story and to to add that insight, you know, because that was like. A life to live. You know, and it's like you don't always get to hear. It's like I'm working on another show n now, BMF, and so hearing, yeah. you know, yeah. So hearing, hearing, real, he thank you, hearing these real life stories, and then getting getting to get some of that from the from the horse's mouth, so to speak, is 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 huge. That's why I'm really excited about this series you're doing and all the other stuff you're doing with with Breakbeat, also. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Well, yeah, I did. I did live an interesting life, and I am lucky to be here talking to you. Because uh, yes. if the government would have had their way, I would have still been in prison, or you know. And, and that's really, you know, from the drug game. That's one of the lucky sides is, is going to prison. Because a lot of my friends that that I was in the game with died along the way. Yeah, you know, this, this process. Yeah. So, uh, and congratulations on the on the on the big meets. What you gonna be doing on the big meets show? Thank you. I am playing a, a new character. Her name is Mabel. And uh, she's a friend of the family until she won't be. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. So y'all can look out for that. Yeah. You guys are, are filming that in Atlanta? Atlanta, yeah. They film in Atlanta and Detroit. My character hasn't had to go to Detroit, but they, they go back and forth a lot. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's oh, nice getting to go 
back uh, to my second home, ATL. So what are some of the yeah. other? Uh, so where are you living in? In LA? I'm in LA now. Yeah, from the from the Bronx, New York. Lived in Atlanta for a while, and now I'm in LA just because, uh, like I was telling Dave earlier, just more opportunity. You know, if you want to be in, if it wasn't, in TV, LA is yeah. places to be. It is absolutely, and you know the weather's nice. So I'll take that too. So, what are some of the other aspirations you have in 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 this film business? Man, I love directing. I want to produce more. I also coach a lot of actors. So I teach actors who want to do what I do, how to do it. You know, I have a, a program called Book More TV and that's all I teach, you know, so I don't, I believe in giving back. So I'm pr in producing my first conference, large conference this summer in Atlanta. Um, I really enjoy teaching and, and giving back and helping people live their dreams. So I believe that plus my own career, like they just help each other out. Um, so that people don't have to struggle as much as I did, you know, figuring out that all that trial and error. Uh, so yeah, just. What, what, what's the name of that conference and, and when is it so people can, can check it out? Oh, thank you for asking. The conference is called Booking Magnet Live. It's this summer, July 15th and 16th in Atlanta. So yeah, you connect with me online and all the information's there. So it's going to be two days of just being poured into by top coaches and experts and casting directors, all that good stuff. Wow. So, yeah. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that, my social. Um, uh, actress Christine Horn. Actress Christine Horn. And I have another Instagram called Hollywood Bound Actors. That's the name of my company. Uh, so anybody who's listening, who wants, to, who's Hollywood bound and wants some tips on how to break in, they can absolutely yeah. follow my, follow my page for that. Last question. Um, since this is Breakbeat, you know, Breakbeat is the, authentically hip hop podcast network. Okay. So everything is, is hip hop. It's, you know, hip hop as a, as a way of life, a way of thinking. Um, did you grow up listening to hip hop? Who are some of your favorite hip hop artists? You know, do you still Ooh. listen to hip hop? Yes. Yes. Girl, I'm especially growing up in the Bronx. I used to love, <laughs> I feel like I'm dating myself, but it's okay. I used to love <laughs> Big Daddy Kane, Salt and Pepper, Father MC. Oh, Man, Tupac, of course. Um, gosh, there were so many. It was just like, it was like the soundtrack of my life. You know, you, you, of course, you remember Brown Sugar, you know, with Tay Diggs and I late them. Like that movie's really special to me because that was that was me in the 70s, you know, growing up. So it's just always a part of me. Yeah. I love any, any, any artist that really was good at telling a good story and their tone. I'm very, because I'm a singer also, I'm really tapped into tones and how it, how it connects and feels in my body. So yeah, those are the people I've always been drawn to, people who tell a good story. You do it all. You, know? you do it all. You know, you know, got to, got to, got to. I love it. I, I'm, a, I'm a performer. I've always wanted to perform. It's just always what I've loved to do. So when people are in kindergarten, they're like, what do you want to be? I want to be a firefighter or a teacher. I'm like, I'm going to be a performer, singer, actor, dancer. I didn't even know what that really meant, but that's always been the, uh, the goal. And I'm living the dream. Not, it's not always easy, yeah. but I love it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming on and, and joining after the snow and, um, Hopefully, like I mentioned, maybe we'll have you back either on this show because we're going to be doing this, you know, keep this going or some of the other shows on on Breakbeat. Um, definitely, you know, want to stay in the mix with you because uh, we love what you what you're doing and uh, can't wait to see you in BMF. Um, yes. Excited about that. When When is that? You know, when that new season is slated to come out? I'm hearing in the fall, perhaps okay. September, but I don't have an exact date. We're still filming. Okay. We'll be filming until July. So great. Yeah. So I'm excited. Thank you for having me. I've been so inspired just by being here today and hearing all the stuff you're working on. And, and it's just like, you know, sometimes you can feel like you're doing too much. And then you talk to somebody who's doing more and be like, Hey, okay, I'm not alone. Pro and proximity, <laughs> proximity is power. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Definitely. Wow. Definitely. Um, look forward to it right. one day. Yes, yes, yes. All righty. I'm going to sign off. Hopefully I do it right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. All right, Christine. Thank you. Yeah, Dave, interesting interview.
Yeah, man. This was this was big, man. This was really exciting. Yep, yep, yep. Because she really, really, uh, if if the show really perpetuates uh, uh, real life, she should be one of one of Franklin's top people. You know, in 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 the next. In his in his next uh, uh, rebound, because I, I think what what he's doing now, I guess you would call that a rebound. He's trying to rebound yeah. right now, regroup and come back, come back at him. Yeah, get cool. get his power, get his power back. Because Leon's gone, Leon's definitely out the country. Yeah, you think you think uh, we're not going to see him back next season? No, I don't think Leon is going to come back. If it do, it just be like a brief flash. Uh, I think he's made his mind up that this game is 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 gotten over his head. Um, and he, okay, but he but but he said that they were going to just go away to clear their heads and think about things. He didn't say permanently, if I remember. And I'm kind of wondering, like, you know, since he's become so kind of uh, socially conscious this season and really concerned about what's going on with the people and the community. You know, is he going to want to come back and try to do something to make a difference, even if he's not back in the game, you know, the same way that he's been with Franklin? Yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting, too. Uh, but we know he, he definitely can't go back from what, where he's at right now. He can't go back to selling dope. Mm -hmm. You know, his mind is 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 beyond that now, I believe. Um, so I yeah. think he's coming back. So I, I believe that she definitely that the writers definitely have to write her in a bigger role. Yeah. It's almost mandatory, you know, that, that um, you know, that Franklin, I mean, who else do we have? He has his girlfriend, his mom, and then after that, right. who, there's nobody else. Right. That he can yeah. No, they, she seems poised to take on a much more significant role in that final season. Um, and, you know, and obviously we're going to be seeing her in BMF. So her star is, is definitely on the rise. And, uh you know, and she has so many talents yeah. too. You know, directing, producing, uh, acting coach. You know, dancer, singer. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was part of the um, Broadway uh, play Lion King. Uh, we didn't get to ask her about that, but when I was learning about her, she did. Uh, she she was like part of you know a huge Broadway play as well. Yeah, definitely have a, has a nice background. And and yeah, seems like she's a workaholic as well. So um, I don't know if I want to. Can I break the news about Wanda? <laughs> <laughs> what I was telling you earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, we we gonna see. Let's see if we can get it. Right. Might right. Well. We learn. Can you can we tell what we learned today? Yeah, you can. Go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, we learned that that uh, Rick's wife is uh kin to uh, uh the actress that plays Wanda. I'm uh forgetting her name right now, but they are cousins. Um we just found this out. So we're gonna be hopefully tracking her down and getting uh Miss Wanda on the show who uh also, you know, well we'll see what kind of role she may have in season six if if she is because she's out there with Leon. Yeah, yeah. And, and my my prediction is that they're going to play very very small roles uh, from here on out, yeah, in, insignificant roles. Um, yeah, like she said, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where Kane, you know, where Kane fits in this thing. At um, it's it's a lot of questions right now, you know, from the way the show ended, you know, with uh, Franklin, Robin, uh, Auntie Louie, and and Uncle. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. Because, you know, I, I think Louis is going to want to kill Franklin. And, yeah. And she might do it. Well, she already With told that, 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 that if he ever uh, got in her way again, Come. she would kill him. Right. But, yeah. and then I didn't even remember that where, where, uh, where we heard today that, that, that Franklin told Louis she'll kill him 10 times to get his money back. That's right. So, I mean, he, he was, he was pissed. Yeah, that whole that whole episode. Gail Bean, that's uh, Wanda's character, the actress who plays Wanda is Gail Bean. So yeah, Gail Bean is Rick's wife's cousin. We learned. So hopefully she will be joining us. Well, um, this was exciting. We were we were supposed to start talking about um, season one 
episode one this week, but um, when we learned that uh, Black Diamond wanted to come on and chop it up with us, of course, you know, we had to shift shift gears a bit. Um, so next week after the snow, we'll be back. Um, we, we announced this last week that we are going to continue uh, to do this podcast together. Um, also, uh, got to shout out our our co-host, uh, Brett. Brett J. I go by Brett J. She, um, she'll be back with us uh, on episodes going forward as well. And yeah, we'll be digging into season one and really talking about each episode. Um, so, you know, please stay along for the ride. We should be getting more guests now. I know we've been promising that. And finally, we we delivered today. And, uh, you know, looking forward to, uh, to to more conversations. Absolutely. Absolutely. And more guests. Uh, we're going to bring some 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 anti snowfall guests on as well on our plan. So stay tuned. Yeah. Don't turn that channel. Uh, we're going to try to get this thing the way you want it. Get all the facts before they hit the screen. All right. After the snow, Breakbeat, Authentically Hip Hop. Check us out at Breakbeat Media on Instagram and breakbeatmedia.com. And uh, I'm at The Real Dave Mays. We thank you guys. And I'm at Freeway Ricky. Exactly. All right, y'all.